Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our Playwright video in Exit Automation's YouTube channel. And this video is all about Playwright's test runner and its breaking changes happened in recent past. So if you have heard about this quote, like change is the only constant in life, then probably it is very, very relevant for the Playwright because there are so many breaking changes happened in recent past and this change has completely made one of my course section to be completely obsolete, something like this. So this is one of the section in my course end-to-end -end test automation with Playwright for C Sharp, JavaScript, Java and TypeScript language binding which I created in Udemy. This section is kind of obsolete and then I ended up creating in a new way. I mean, the section actually talks about almost pretty much like whatever we discussed over here on the Playwright Test Runners and Folio, but the concept has been evolved and merged into a new breaking changes over here in this section because there were so many deprecated things happened on the libraries as you can see over here. The Playwright Test Library is deprecated and you can see that it is right now archived and also the Playwright CLI has been deprecated, archived and it's moved to Playwrights command line interface again, but just that they don't call it as Playwright CLI anymore. Everything runs on Playwright command like Folio as well as the Playwright CLI. So what are the changes which are happen and when we can see all these things? Well, those things you can see actually in this particular change log where they have mentioned about introducing Playwright test, this one. And that's exactly what we'll be discussing in this particular video and I will show you how different it is compared to the earlier video which I released almost like eight months before in YouTube just talking about the Playwright Test Runners and Playwright CLI. All right, so in order to work, I'm gonna create everything from the ground up so that we'll have a clear understanding about how it works. So I'm just gonna create a directory called as Playwright Test Demo. I'm gonna go to the Playwright Test Demo over here. I'm gonna open the code and I'm gonna add the dev dependency of the playwright. And we also need another dev dependency, uh, which is gonna be for the playwright test. And the version is 1.14.1 as well. All right. So once we have all these things over here, I can then do an npm install. And we are pretty good to go to write our code. So you will see that the playwright test which is the recent installment of the test execution in Playwright. Now the Playwright team is suggesting you to write all the tests mostly using the Playwright test because it is kind of very, very interesting, very easy to use, pretty much like the just test runner that you might have used in other testing frameworks. That's exactly what it is, uh, but just that this is the flavor of the Playwright itself. So you need to create a folder called as test if you really wanted to, uh, so that the Playwright will automatically discover your test if it is sitting inside that. And then you can create a new file uh, and you can call this as probably first test.spec.ts. I'm going to write the test in the TypeScript language binding. And we then have to start importing uh, from our Playwright test itself, something like this. And the thing is I'm going to import is going to be the test and the expect so that I'm going to start writing it. And these are the things which has changed in recent past. Instead of the describe and it block of the playwright test which was there before in the folio now you can see there is something called a test method within that they have other properties like describe so you can start writing the code something like this so you may be wondering some of the syntax are automatically coming for me over here well those are coming because i have installed the uh, github copilot and i have already gained the access of the preview version and that's why you can see all these syntaxes are coming for me no wonder how all these things are happening so you can see it already know that i'm gonna write my first test so there we go and it's also writing some puppeteer code over here which is crazy i'm not gonna do that uh and then within the test we also have uh something like our steps and something like that which i will probably show you so i'm gonna say uh the google test something like this. And then I'm gonna write the asynchronous of probably the page, which is gonna be expanded, something like this. And we're gonna start writing the Google test code over here. You can see that it's automatically typing all the code for me over here. I mean, you can use this code, but I think this code is pretty legit. It is automatically generated from the GitHub Copilot, which is 
pretty insane. I mean, it automatically recognized all the uh, things which I'm gonna do for the Google test. This is the google.com website you're gonna go and the ID that you're gonna be searching is the name uh, Q as playwright. You're gonna click this button, wait for the navigation and then get the title and then see if the Google search has playwright. Seriously, this is insane. And I'm gonna take the same code and we'll see if this code actually executes. So I'm just gonna go and then I'm gonna do npx playwright of test. I'm gonna execute it. I'm not even going inside the test folder the reason being not going inside the test folder is player automatically knows that I need to go and find any test spec file inside any test folder within the project. And it had found that the first test.spec.ts and executed the test for us as well, which is crazy. It's working. And we can also see if this is really working or not by taking a screenshot. So I can do something like await page.screenshot of this path probably even the full path as true. Cool. And I will try going over here. And as I told you within the playwright, they have brought the CLI option as well. So if you just put NPX playwright test, it just runs in the headless mode. You can also do the headed mode, something like this. And you can also specify the browser if you wanted to. So I can specify the browser as Firefox. The default browser is actually a Chrome browser. So let me try executing it. And it opens the Firefox browser for me. It's entering the playwright and it's just waiting for the page to load. And there you go, the test got successfully completed. It also took a screenshot for me, the full page screenshot. Awesome. So it tells me that the code which is generated by the GitHub Copilot is actually legit. I'm not resting the GitHub Copilot over here, but I could also see that it is awesome. I didn't even write even a single line of code and it works. But are we testing GitHub Copilot or Playwright? No, we are in the Playwright already. Uh, so the code you can see over here, now it is very, very interesting, right? Like you can do test.describe and then you can see test over here on the method and uh, you can write the test over here. You can also organize this test if you wanted to. For example, if you want to do, do like a step-by-step -step test, so you can just use this test.step something like this and then you can write uh, one by one step so for example I wanted to do something like uh, step one uh, navigate google.com something like this and then I can just do an async of this particular page something like this so this way you can see that it is gonna be more readable so you can write a steps within your test so there is another step is automatically then search for playwright, <laughs> which is interesting. So almost everything which I require is coming up automatically for me. Thank you, GitHub Copilot. And then I'm gonna do one more thing, which is gonna be checking if the first result of the playwright test is available there or not. Insane, right? Cool. All right, everything is there for me. And the most important thing you need to do is, because these tests are gonna be running in asynchronous mode, you need to do an await on the test step as well. So you can do all these things, something like this over here, you can save it and then format the document. So you can see your test is gonna be looking more aligned. So this is another great power of this uh, test runner. And let's say if I run this test, it is gonna naturally run without any problem. There is no big difference on that. So this is another feature of the test organizing, like how you can do like step by step, you can see over here, it is all running fine without any problem. Uh, and also you can run the test based on the retry if any test fails. For example, if you go over here, if this button K doesn't exist and if you want to retry your test without just failing instantly. So as you can see over here, I'm just running the test and you could see that there is no such a button. So it is waiting for the timeout period of 30 seconds. And if the page doesn't really find the BTN instead of BTNK, then the test is going to eventually fail. So that is one way of you doing it. But if you want to really retry the test instead of failing it abruptly after waiting for like 30 seconds, then probably you can do that as well 
within your playwright configurations. So all you're gonna do is over here, you can come to this command line configurations where you can tell, okay, retry, retries for like, do a retry for one time. And you can also set the timeout period of, uh, let's say five seconds, something like this. So if you do that, it is going to open the browser for you over here. And as you can see, it's waiting for five seconds and it failed. And then it's also opening the browser a second time Again, going to enter and it's going to fail because it didn't really find it. So this is another way for you to uh, you to test the flaky tests and you can wait for the retry uh, as well. And also you can mark the test as slow test if you wanted to like this test looks like if it is slow. I mean, this is step basically you can't do over here. You can do it here like test dot slow or you can also do text dot fix me if the test actually fails uh, and also you can do test dot only if you wanted to run only one specific test within the describe block so all these things you can do over here i have discussed exclusively about all these things which i'm talking over here in my course in udemy which has got all the details that you're looking for starting from the uh, javascript language binding to the typescript language binding uh, you can see we have advanced labs like advanced network interception, working with cookies, data-driven testing, simple framework design with TypeScript, uh, Java language binding support, and c -sharp language binding support, integrating with GitHub Actions, Azure DevOps, Dockers, and also the updated code, just talking about the Playwright test a lot. So I have discussed a lot more than what you are seeing over here in this particular video. But hope you really like how the Playwright test actually executes the test and works. It is very interesting to see everything is coming up pretty well together. But if you really wanted to learn more, I would advise you to go with my course. And once again, thank you very much for watching this video and you guys have a great day.